Hello, this is Evan Zizi Japanese with your first kanji lesson. Before we jump into it, let me just remind you to like the uh, like this video, uh, share it with your friends who are also learning Japanese, and feel free to comment telling me, "Hey, I actually appreciate you doing this," or "You suck, Evan. Die." Anything of the uh, any sort of um, feedback is highly appreciated. Um, once again. I haven't made a single penny off this website whatsoever. In fact, it's cost me some $70. But I enjoy doing it, so that's why it's here. Feel free to help me out in the very least, in any way possible. Please, I beg you! Anyway, other things to check out on the website. I am working right now on a, a list and detailed explanation of famous families of Japan. For example, the Taira and the Minamoto, or the Hyojo and the... Um, the Hojo and the, uh, oh geez, others. And uh, that way it'll help you read the history. Go check out the history. I have about four time periods up there. Also, you can read about pirates. I'm still working on that because I'm learning more and more about Japanese pirates every day. Japan has samurai, ninjas, and pirates. Boom. You can check out the folk tales under the adventures section. I'm writing out all of, uh, as many Japanese folk tales as I can find um, as quickly as I can, but it takes time. And also you can check out the hiragana, katakana. If you don't know hiragana and katakana yet, stop and don't watch this video, watch a different one. Uh, start with hiragana and katakana. Also we have grammar lessons. So this is websites turning into a pretty cool thing in my opinion. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, not quite as big as I want it to be yet. Back to kanji. First off, let's talk about what kanji is. Kanji is from China. It was imported from China basically along with uh, Buddhism around the 300-400 area. Uh, believe it or not, Japan went a long time without being able to read or write. Um, so details of history before um, the year 200 are very vague and not necessarily accurate, unfortunately. Uh, they're, they're almost entirely based off of um, archaeological records and hearsay, basically is what it amounts to. Um, what it is is Chinese writing. It literally is Chinese writing. Um, in fact, hiragana and katakana all came from these kanji. This was the first writing system introduced to Japan. Um, going further, when you write kanji, for example, you've learned sentences so far. If th one, This is coming after lesson 15, so hopefully you've learned some Japanese by now. The words that you've been learning will be replaced by kanji. Not all of them, but some of them. And that's basically what this does. Kanji replaces the hiragana um, so that understanding can happen much quicker. So for example you can glance over kanji and even if you have no idea what the word is you might know what the meaning is. Kanjis have their own meanings and thus if you see a list, a series of kanji, you, you might not know how to pronounce it but you kinda know what it might mean sometimes. Let's begin learning kanji. This is the first kanji I'm going to teach you. It is pronounced nan and or nani. Kanjis have more than one reading, almost always. There are many kanjis that have more than one re reading. Some of them have as many as probably ten readings. Some of them have special readings. It's very complicated. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's very complicated. That's why we're beginning now, so you can start getting a hold on kanji, because there's well over 5,000 of them. That's being generous, I think. The first one you're going to learn, nani, what. This basically means what. Say what? Um, you've encountered nani, hopefully, by now. And uh, next step about kanji. It has a thing called stroke order. Kanji was originally written with brushes and ink, and those are stroking utensils, you stroke with them. And when you're learning how to write a kanji, it's very important to learn the stroke order, at least the basics of the stroke order. I'm going to kind of coach you along as we go because I see common mistakes all the time. Try to pay attention to the basics of stroke order. And you'll be able to do, if you do so, you'll be able to learn A, how many strokes are in a kanji, which is important when you have a dictionary. This page will have a recommendation for kanji dictionaries. You should definitely buy one. Um, number two, stroke order helps your kanjis look proper. You don't want to have nasty looking kanji and be made fun of by every chap Japanese kid in the world. Uh, the only kids, who are, the only people who are going to make fun of your kanji are the people who don't know not to. 
Your Japanese is better if you know stroke order. So here's the stroke order for this kanji. You start off here, one, two, three, and then we draw the box on the inside. Pay attention to how I draw the box. This is almost how every single square in Japanese is written. One, two, three, four, five, this is one stroke, five, followed by six. And the last one is seven, it's a little hook. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that is how you write Nani. Awesome. Okay, the next kanji that we're going to learn is Watashi. This is the word for me and or I. Um, it's pronounced Watashi. There are other pronunciations, but so far we've only learned Watashi. Here we go, stroke order. This is going to help you know how to write kanji. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Watashi. From the two kanji you've learned so far, hopefully you've noticed a general pattern of how the kanjis are written. Same with hiragana and same with katakana. It generally is written starting up here and slowly going down to the bottom right. From the top left to the bottom right. That's generally how kanjis are written. Word! Okay, the next kanji that we're learning is hon. This kanji literally means the source of something. However, the way that you've learned it so far is book. Why is that? Because when you want to make sure something's accurate, you go to the source, which is a written document known as a book. And honestly, Hones used to be cylindrically like scrolls, and thus it also counts things that are long and cylindrical. Not important right now. Here we have Hone. Let's write it out together. One, two, three, four, Five. Left to right. One, down, two, down, three, four, five. That is how you write home. A little bit ugly, sorry, but that's how you write home, okay? Word. The next kanji we're going to learn is the mi of mimas. Sometimes an entire word does, is not one single kanji. So far, we've been le learning uh, kanji that are all together one word. However, this one, especially with verbs, kanjis do not encompass the entire verb. So, here we go. This is the mi of mimas. Let's learn how to write this. One. Two. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's how we write it out. One more time. Notice how I do. This is this right. You see this square right here? That's another box, just like in Nani. Notice how it's filled in the exact same way as when I did the kanji Nani. Once again, one, we did the left side. Two, we do the outside. All in one stroke. One, two. Sorry, one, two. And then what we usually do with these boxes is fill them in before we close them off. So one, two, three, four, and then we close it off five. Six, seven. That is the me of mimas. But Evan, writing me with a hiragana me is much faster. I don't care. Don't do that with me. <laughs> Learn the kanji, write the kanji, you'll thank me later. We got a few more. Next kanji that we have is the ki of kimas. The ki of kimas. To come. Here we go. Let's learn the stroke order. Really quickly, just again, it's only the ki of kimas. All together this kimas, however, it's just ki of kimas. means to come. Stroke order is thus. One. 
Two, three, four, five, six, seven. As you can tell, this kanji sort of a little bit breaks the top left, bottom right, but not by much. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One thing you might have also noticed is that it looks somewhat, somewhat, somewhat similar to the kanji for book. I'll draw a book over it. If you notice, they both have this thing going on. One, two, three, four. Albeit, they are in different areas, slightly. Uh, one, two, three, four. And then Hone has one, two, three, four. They both have this going on. You have just been introduced to your first radical. These are called radicals. Many kanji have something similar in them. And we use these things to look up kanjis in dictionaries. If you don't know how to pronounce it, you use what's known as radicals. This is the radical ki. It means tree. I'm not formally introducing it here. We will encounter it later. However, be aware that it does exist. And here we have the last kanji I'm going to be teaching today. This is the i of ikimas. Ikimas. I. Ikimas. It means to go. Here we go. Let's learn the stroke order. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Followed by ki mas. Iki mas. And next, I just wanted to show you what radicals are, so stay tuned and we're going to do some radicals. Okay, and here is a review of everything that we've learned. These are the kanji that we've learned. We've learned nani also pronounced nan. We have learned watashi, which means me. Hon, which means book or source. Kimas, come. It's just the key of kimas, kimas. The mi of mimas, mi. And iki, uh, the e of ima, ikimas, sorry, the e of ikimas. I'm going to circle the radicals. I haven't taught the radicals yet. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm just showing you kanji that you want to be able to use. We're not teaching it sort of the conventional way, which a lot of people are going to be mad at. But I'm going to show you what the radicals are of these kanji. So, these are the radicals. Nani's radical is this guy right here. When you're looking him up in a dictionary, look for that radical. It means person. Watashi's radical is this guy right here. It is the wa radical. That's just what it is. So notice how left side left side of the kanji. Hon and kimas, as I explained earlier, have the same radical, ki, which means tree. And mimas has its own radical. It doesn't have its own radical, I'm sorry. Its radical is the eyeball. That is me. It means I. Notice how this one's on top. Radicals can come anywhere. Next we have ikimas, which believe it or not is its own radical. This is a, I don't know exactly the term, but a source radical. It is a radical in and of itself. Other kanjis use this kanji to make new kanji. This is something. For example, you'll find kanjis that look like this. Then on the inside there's be a whole, there'll be a whole bunch of junk on the inside. This is an enclosure kanji. It keeps stuff on the inside. There you go. These are the kanjis. Have yourself a good day.